Well, please turn for me this evening to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Well, friends, we come uh, this evening to uh, look at this uh, passage. Today, of course, you don't need me to remind you, it's the last day of 2023. Uh, another year is almost done, almost over as we enter into the new year. And perhaps again, we want to ask ourselves, well, uh, how did we spend uh, this year? How did we find it? How did you find it, this particular year that is past? Did you find it purposeful? Did you find it meaningful, the year that you spent? Or will you look back and think, well, it's just another year of vanity to add to all the previous years that went before. Another, uh, another year of uh, ritual and uh, tediousness and profitlessness and uh, vanity, everything, just the sa a sameness about it. There's not much difference, perhaps, one or two things, but uh, more or less the same as any other year that went before it. And emptiness is still felt through the year. Perhaps, friends, that emptiness, as Solomon here is telling us, is because we had, we lived the year without God. We lived the year without purpose because God was left out of our lives. We thought we could manage ourselves and we found out to our detriment that it's not the case. We cannot really truly obtain the meaning and purpose of life uh, without the Lord. This is the argument that King Solomon is putting before us in this book of Ecclesiastes. He is the author of the book, of course, but uh, for a moment he backslid from the Lord and he lived a life apart from God. And in that time, well, he gave himself to everything that under the sun, everything that he could uh, enjoy. He tried, he tasted, he experienced all that the world could offer him. He, he held back from nothing. And at the end, after all, his conclusion was vanity of vanities, all is vanity. You can see that in the first uh, chapter. He found out, well, I've tried everything, I've experienced everything, but at my, my final verdict on everything that this world has to offer is it's meaningless, it's profitless, it's empty. You know, life is meaningless and he goes on to tell us until we find the Lord until we include him in our life instead of excluding him then only do we begin to realize the meaning of, of life it's only friends when you and I begin to relate personally to God and begin a relationship with him then things make sense then this world begins to make sense. Then our life makes sense. Well, tonight we're looking at these uh, very well-known uh, words here in uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, a piece of literature that even the secular world is very familiar with. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and uh, so on. And uh, uh, we'll be looking through these words. We'll look at the its meaning as Solomon gave it to us, but then also look at it from a spiritual side of it, because I'm sure that's also was uh, in his mind. So looking at it first on, this, on its surface meaning, but then uh, looking at it in a second, a second and possibly even a third way, um, we may look at it, go through it a third time, but uh, briefly. So here is this, uh, the first uh, ob uh, obvious surface meaning uh, from this text and it's referring uh, to a life really uh, the life in this world how this life is a changing world that we are living in it's a changing circumstances that we are in and it's something friends over which we have no control verse 1 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A season here referring to a fixed time, a predetermined time, a set time. Set by who? Who has set these 
predetermined things. And it's God. It's God that's, in, that's here. Every, all these times that I referred to here are foreordained by God. And it's in line with His purposes. The time when something comes into existence, how long it's going to be in existence for, and when it comes to an end, well, all these things are determined by God, not by ourselves. It's saying to us, this passage, that we are living in a world where things are outside of our control. God is working overall through all the circumstances of life. God is working His purposes out. God is sovereignly working His will out. But for us, well, it's quite depressing actually, but we cannot control the things that are happening to us. It's extremely frustrating for us to think like that because we like to think of ourselves as the masters of our own destiny. Everything is in my hands. I can control whatever is happening to me. I can direct things. I can influence my environment. I can make it how I like it to be. I can make my life what I want it to be. But these verses are telling me emphatically, you can't, because you are subject to things that are outside of your control. And you have no power to change those things. You have to just go with the flow, as it were. You have to follow. You are being moved along, uh, along by these events. So I'm not in control, but God is in uh, control. And that's humbling for me as a person to know that I cannot control what's happening in my life. Well, we'll look at it uh, in this way, because that's the, the main meaning here. A time uh, to be born. Well, we had no control over that. The time when we came into this world, maybe we would have preferred to be uh, born in a previous age. But no, you were born in the 19th century or the 20th, or rather uh, the 20th century or the 21st century. You were born at that time. And you were born into that particular family where God placed you. You had no choice of the matter. You may have preferred to be, you, you were, the ethnic group that you were born into is, uh, was that you had no control over that. The features that you were given, you may not like the features that your parents passed on to you, but you had no choice. You couldn't uh, say no to them. They came your way. We were born with these things. We have no, no, uh, no we had no uh, decision making, uh, uh, no decision at that time. We couldn't uh, contribute and say, this is what we want. A time to die is similar. The length of my life in this world is fixed already. I have no choice, really. I cannot say when I'm going to die. I have an appointment with death, but an appointment that is fixed by God. It's on God's calendar, the day of my death. I cannot change that. I cannot alter that. I, can, I cannot bring it forward. I cannot delay that time. How I die, whether I die in peace, or whether I die in pain, whether I die young, or whether I die old, all these things are not determined by me. They're determined by God. Oh, what about healthy eating and exercising? Oh, that may, that may enable you to have a, a, a more a better life in this world, but it won't enable you to delay your death or put off your death any by one day, by one moment even. It's all arranged by God. Verse uh, 2, and I won't go through all of these uh, because I'll just pick up on some of these things that Solomon says. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck, to pluck up that which is planted. Well, every farmer knows this. You can't plant seed. You can't sow the seed at any time of the year. There are certain seasons when it must be sown. Every farmer, every gardener knows this. You, you have to follow the rules of nature. You're bound by those rules of nature. You may want to sow it at another time, but you can't do it unless you use some artificial method, way of doing it. We, man has uh, no choice. He has to fit in with the appointed season. We're limited by these things. And, and uh, to pluck up 
uh, that which is planted. Again, it could refer to the harvest time, or it could refer even to the times when there's inclemental weather. There's a storm comes in and destroys the crops, or a, a flood, or some other thing, and you have no choice. You would expect it to ha a harvest, but instead you're having to pluck up that which has been destroyed by the weather. And, or perhaps there's an abundance of weeds and you've got no other choice but again to pluck up those things. It's out of your control. Many people <laughs> plan to go away on holiday, isn't it? Many people plan to travel away for the weekend to Europe. No one expected the Euro Tunnel to flood and to come in uh, and spoil their, their trips like that. They would planned, they'd, they'd made the arrangement but the weather changed all these things. It's in God's hands. It's out of our, uh, out of our control. Verse 4 is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time uh, to dance. Well, life is like that, isn't it? We wish every day was a happy day, but it's not. We wish family life was always happy, but it's not. There's a family life is up and down. Sometimes there are periods of great gladness and sometimes there are periods of great sadness. It's a mixture of the two and often we can't control it. It's joy when one member of the family is promoted at the workplace but then there's sadness when another member is made redundant. There's joy when a young baby is born, a newborn comes into the family and there's tears and sadness and weeping when one is taken away, one who is much loved is, uh, passes away. So there's a mixture of weeping and laughter. That's, uh, that's life. Verse 6, there's a time to get and a time to lose. A time to get. Oh, when the economy is doing well. When the, every, the markets are, are doing well. That's a time to make great gains financially. And uh, you, you can make use of that opportunity. Uh, you can save a lot of money uh, from it as well uh, during that time. But then the pandemic hits. And then what happens? Recession follows. And you begin to lose. And perhaps the interest rates go up. And suddenly your, your outgoings are more than your incoming. And you are losing out. But you're made poorer during that time. One minute you are doing well. And the next minute things change. Fluctuation. Everything uh, fluctuates in this life. Nothing is guaranteed to just continue as it is. Verse 8, a time to love and a time uh, to hate. We make good friends. We're very good friends with them, perhaps for a long time. But then they do something or they turn against us and unexpectedly uh, we, they prove uh, un unfaithful. And then that love that we had for them turns to a kind of hatred. We love them less than we did before because of the way that they are now disposed towards us, because they have changed uh, towards us. One minute we thought we'd be friends forever, and next minute something happens and the friendship is broken. A time of war and a time of peace. Well, we wish, isn't it? We wish that there were peace and harmony between nations always existed, but we know it's not so. Every day there, are, there is some war or other going on in the world. And even our periods of peace, even in this land, have been disrupted by war uh, at one stage or another. So you can see, friends, that all, um, all our times really <laughs> are in God's hands. They are outside of our own uh, control, all events at His command. And so it's humbling for us to realize how limited we are. What can we do in the face of our circumstances? Well, let's look at it. Secondly, that's uh, the primary meaning. But let's look at it in a, a spiritual way as well, because Solomon's uh, writing is in a parabolic form uh, as well. And we can take these in a spiritual sense. And we can learn from his words how we can use our time uh, with profit uh, in this world and how we can find meaning in our life. In this earthly life, we are limited. Uh, but here, 
we should, uh, we should use our time, a time to be born, we could say also is a time, spiritually speaking, to be born again. A time to be right with God. Use our time in this life to seek the Lord until we find Him, to obtain a right relationship with Him. Now is the time that I can find, uh, have a spiritual life. Now is the time that I can be reconciled to God. Use this time to be born again and the time to die. To the end that we may be born again, we have to say goodbye to our old life. We have to die, as it were, to the old life. Consider that life that was without God a thing of the past. And we say, no more am I going to live in that kind of a way. As I'm dead to that kind of a lifestyle. From now on, I want to live for God. I want to know God. A time to kill and a time to heal. To heal. A time to kill our sins. The Spirit of God uh, helping us. Oh, friends, our sins, they hurt us. Our sins, they harm us. Our sins do us spiritual damage, friends. Our sins hurt our relationships with one another and they hurt our relationships with God. They separate us from God. They're not our friends. They're like cancer cells, bad cancer cells, which must be killed and killed again and again repeatedly so that they don't hurt us spiritually. They must be treated in this kind of a way. Don't treat sin as, as our friends. We must, it's a time to kill these things, but we can only do it as we turn to the Lord with the Lord's help. And through conversion, there is healing for us. Oh, we've been through a life without God, and what we have, have we obtained uh, as a result of that? Wounds, spiritual wounds. The wounds of uh, anger and resentment and unforgiveness and bitterness and pride. All these are like open wounds. Sometimes you can see in people's faces and you can see in people's character. You can see these kind of wounds. Well, how can we be free from them? How can we be, as it were, healed of them? Oh, it's by coming to Christ. It's by being converted. The Lord will make us a new person a different person. These are the things, friends, a time to heal. You come to the Lord, He will change you. He will deal with those wounds that are in our lives and He will heal them uh, for us. And then look, a time to build and a time to break down. Well, these are, we could think of these as the strongholds in our minds, those things that we build up in our minds and which keep us from God and which we have held on to. Uh, and they act as a barrier between God and ourselves. And he said, we will not believe because I will have these, uh, these atheistic beliefs in me. I'll hold on uh, to uh, what uh, evolution says and I will cling on to these particular things and build my life around that. But we need to break those down. Break those down because those, that kind of way of thinking will keep us uh, from the Lord. We need to build up in a better way by adopting what the Bible teaches us, taking the, the gospel, taking uh, the teaching of, of, of Christ, teaching, uh, taking the word of God and building our life upon these things that truly lead us to God. You see, friends, you see how uh, we can use our life in a better way. Friends, this is also a time for us to grieve. Verse 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time uh, to dance. Oh, this doesn't sound very nice, does it? It's, why are you calling us to mourn and grieve? We didn't come to a funeral tonight, did we? Oh, friends, we have much cause to grieve. We have much cause if we only just realized how we have been towards the Lord. If we only realize how we have treated one who has been so kind to us. We know that if a, if a, a fellow human being is kind to us and we respond with unthankfulness or we respond in a nasty way to them, we feel bad in our hearts. That's only a small thing really. 
But when God has been continually good and kind to us, and we treat him with disdain, with disinterestedness, with unbelief, we don't believe what he tells us, with rebellion, with unthankfulness, this is what we respond to him like. Well, how can we uh, be joyful as it were? How can we glory in ourselves? He has been nothing but good to us, and we repay him in such a way. We need to, it's a time for sadness in our souls to mourn and to weep at our, our, our treatment of the Lord. But if we do, friends, if we do come in that way and humble ourselves and are sorry, well, he will turn our mourning into laughter and uh, into rejoicing. He will replace it with these things. Oh, friends, he, if we repent, He will forgive us all our sins. He will make us smile and laugh again. Oh, this, is there any greater joy in this world than to know that all your sins are forgiven? If you know that, friends, won't that make you leap and dance for joy that, and be so glad and thankful to God? Oh, that is true joy. So much better than the temporal joys of this world. There's nothing uh, better. It's a time, I um, move down uh, to uh, the second part of verse 5, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. It's a time, friends, to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. This is what life is for, to make Him your own Savior and to make Him your friend, to embrace Him by faith to know His personal love for you, oh friends. But to know this, to know Christ in this personal way, you also have to refrain from embracing idols, things which keep you from God, that which you've made perhaps an idol of all your life up to this point. Maybe it's the idol of self. For some it's the idol of amusements or the idol of money. But perhaps the greatest idol is self, and we have to let go, we have to refrain from uh, embracing that idol, and we have to embrace the Savior. This is the time to do it. Verse 6, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. Oh, what an opportunity is before you, friends. Yeah, what's at hand before you in this life? But you've got to be quick to take it because it's only available for this lifespan, for time alone. Turn to Christ and you gain. Turn to Jesus Christ, believe in Him, and you gain spiritual riches. You gain a secure place in heaven and you lose things as well. What do I lose if I come to Christ? Oh, you lose a guilty conscience. You lose a condemning conscience. You lose those things. You lose a place in hell. You are saved. You are delivered from a place in hell. You lose those things. Isn't it worth losing all these things and gaining all the others? Oh, friends, this is what Christ will do for us. A time, verse 7, to keep silence and a time uh, to speak. Oh, surely... Now is the time to do this. Oh, we have so many thoughts. We have so many opinions. We want to voice our opinions. Everyone wants to have their voice to be heard. Everyone wants their opinion to be known. But it's better to keep silence, especially when God is speaking. Do we hear what He is saying? Do we hear what our Creator is silent? It would be our wisdom to listen. To listen, to listen uh, to the Lord and to hear what He is saying to us. And then, after we've lis listened, then it's a time to speak, a time to tell Him you're sorry, a time you tell Him that you're repentant, a time to tell Him that you trust in Jesus Christ, a time to tell Him from your heart that you'll hold back no longer, You'll yield your life over to Him. You tell Him these things. You listen to Him. And then you tell Him these things. You know what? He'll hear you. 
He'll hear your voice. He'll hear what you are saying. And then there's a time to love, a time to love God, and a time to hate those things that act as a barrier uh, between you and Him, the world and its sinful pleasures. Oh, friends, hate those things because they keep you from knowing the Lord. This is how we are to live our life, to, to seek Him and to find Him. This is, in doing these things, we shall find uh, the purpose of our life. But I want to close with a, a very briefly and just uh, take you away, really, from, from time and uh, to a place where time is no more. Of course, it's heaven. To take you to heaven and use some of these words because they're also a message to us about what life will be like in heaven itself. To those of us who are born again in this life, to those who are converted, they will enter into heaven where they, sh where they shall be forever and forever. They shall never die. The Lord Jesus said, whoever believes in him will never die. And it is so. They, uh, there's no time for them to die. They shall be planted in God's house and never plucked up and cast out of God's house. There is nothing in the, in, in the heavenly world to hurt them, nothing to harm them. There's no wounds to gain them, uh, to, to affect them in that place. They will enjoy perpetual health. They'll be safe in that place, surrounded by the walls of salvation. Oh, friends, uh, this is what heaven is like. They shall never sh shed a tear again. There's no, there's no sighing there. There's no sorrowing there, as it says here. This world, we have this mixture of sorrow and sadness and happiness. But there, it's only happiness. There is only joy. There, there is an absence of sad things. All those things, those sad things we experience in this life, they're no more. It, does, it doesn't happen to the citizens of, he of heaven. They're, and so there is no sighing, there is no crying. They're happy every moment. They shall uh, enjoy everlasting joys. They shall embrace everlasting joys. All that get their friends, all that is promised to them, God will give to them in that world, it's theirs to keep. It's, it's a time to get, and it's a time to keep. They keep it forever. No thief can enter there, the Lord said, and steal from them those, that inheritance which Christ has prepared for them. It's all safe uh, for them for eternity. There is there. That place, it's a place of all love. There's no hatred. There's no wars there. It's only peace. There's no severance from friends and brethren who are there whom we love. There's no goodbyes. They're there. Oh, friends, this is what heaven is like. There we shall be embraced by Christ himself. There the believer, the one who trusts in Christ, will be forever with the Lord. Oh, friends, you embrace him in this life. This is your portion in the next life. This is your lot for you. Don't waste your life. Don't go seeking after worldly enjoyments and pleasures. Don't exclude God from your life. You'll only end up with the same conclusion as Solomon. It's all been vanity. And then when you want to turn to him, perhaps at the end of, of your years, you won't have the desire to turn to Him. You won't have the will to turn to Him. Now is the time while the Lord is dealing with you, while the Lord is drawing you to Himself, turn to Him and believe in Him with all your heart. Trust Him and you'll find the joy of knowing Him. Life will become somewhat joyful. Life will be happier. Life will be more purposeful when we know the Saviour. Come to him, friends. Let's pray together.
O oh Lord our God, we uh, humble ourselves again before you and ask that you would uh, be our leader and teacher and instructor in these things. We thank you again for your word that uh, shows us even that you are in control and Lord that our life and uh, our purpose even for life is to be found in knowing Christ, in knowing you. May we be brought to you uh, even this night. May we be brought to faith and to repentance. Lord, grant to us your blessing. May none of us here be found without the Saviour. Oh, hear our prayer. Bless us, each one, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. And let's uh, close by singing our final hymn, which is number 395, Loosed from my God and Far Removed, 395.